All right, so I want to introduce this, and some of you were involved in this yesterday, so you know what's going on. We have a, a uh, 2011 Honda Odyssey. Uh, the waveform behind me is just an uh, amp clamp connected to the fuse box already. Um, the issue with this vehicle is it has a misfire. Okay, so it was brought in for a misfire, and what uh, the purpose of this video, I, I think it's going to be fast. I don't. I don't really do anything fast, but that's the goal here is to make this a quick video on something that I call intentional shutdown of a fuel injector. Okay, so I kind of spilled the beans here as far as what we're doing. And um, I want to show you guys that the computer will at times shut a fuel injector down when you have a misfire. And what that can lead to if you're unaware of it is it can lead to misdiagnosis. So that's the purpose of this is to show you intentional shutdown and I want to start with our trouble codes and our misfire monitors on the scan tool. Alright so there's our info it's a 2011 Honda Odyssey 3.5 V6. This vehicle came in with a cylinder 3 misfire okay that's all it had. We found that we had a bad spark plug so again I'm kind of telling you up front what this vehicle needs. It has a bad plug, the plug had evidence of oil burning over time and or some types of deposits and uh, it basically closed the gap almost on the plug the plug is bad it is a faulty plug what we did off camera is we moved cylinder 3 coil to cylinder whatever and it didn't move our misfire stayed with 3 and then we moved the plug from cylinder 3 to cylinder 4 and our misfire moved to cylinder 4 so this cylinder 4 code that's up here was not there before got it our issue with this van is it has a faulty spark plug, okay? Uh, let's look at our misfire counters. Our bad plug is now in number four, so let's take a look at that misfire data. I was actually very happy to see misfire data on a Honda. I thought was, that was pretty cool. Um, go ahead and start that. Let's look at this data. We take a look at cylinder four. You see, that's the one that's counting. You guys see it? All right, the rest of these, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we got them all in a line here. We have some other data over here. I don't know if it's, yeah, it looks like a uh, total miss. This is some type of count. But the, the live part of the, the misfire, did that just stop misfiring? No, I can see it's missing still. It stopped counting, that's kind of strange. It counted up to 99 and then stopped. That was and then it's showing uh cylinder four. Wasn't this one was that counting a second ago, this one? Um shut that off. Restart it again probably gonna lose data here I there's our misses back I'm just want to watch I'm not familiar with how Honda does their misfire uh, strategies as far as this goes that's kind of weird I'm not worried about that though this this thing has a miss I can see the engine rocking we have a cylinder four misfire okay all right um, go ahead and shut that off turn the key on if you notice under the hood, my engine pretty much covers everything. I can't really get to anything easily. Um, it looks like the coils themselves we can, we can kind of get to. The injectors we certainly cannot. And uh, I don't remember, guys, why did we go injection first over the, all the ignition coils? Do you remember what was our purpose of that? Why did we go fuel injectors? Because that's where I have this amp probe connected right now is to the fuel injector fuse. With, this, with, the, with the mallets on it, yes. you know, and swapping the coils and no change. Okay, got gotcha. you. We figured it had too low a mile set to have a bad spark plug yeah. already. Yeah, okay. Um, so, so we went in Jackson just simply because when we moved the coils, it stayed with the number three. Right. And we didn't bother with the plug yet. Right. And that was just the only reason we picked the injectors. And if you look under the hood, uh, I can't get to the injectors, but I can get to a central location, which by the way is fuse number 10, 
and it is listed it's listed as FI main FI main it's a 15 amp fuse fuse number 10 is where we're connected so we're connected to that fuse and we have this pattern going on on the screen go ahead and start that real quick I want you guys to see this 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 was a, a debate we had yesterday is what is all of this noise in here there's a ton of noise and uh, go ahead and uh, wait one second time base wise I can see fuel injector patterns in here if you look at them close you guys can see them too but there's a lot of noise in here okay go ahead and shut that back off and uh, turn your key off first key is off right now and I am not zeroed exactly where I need to be this is laying across some other relays which isn't helpful better guys all I did for that is I just moved the amp clamp up off of the relays and then stuck uh, the cover underneath just to keep it away from our other relays that make magnetic fields and then I re-zeroed that amp probe so you see up on the screen it's nice and smooth with the key off right turn your key on this is our injector circuit and here's the reason that this is here is there are other circuits that are running off of this this is what I was mapping out this morning while we were waiting for guys to come in um, it is a seven page diagram yeah so uh, it goes everywhere and uh, our fuel injectors are down here and our main relay that feeds power to this circuit it's the PGM FI main relay is here the fuse that we're connected to is right here and what we are powering up on this circuit is the engine computer is being powered <coughs> um, I have it actually listed here uh, the injectors the mass airflow sensor which sits here is being powered the um, ETCS control relay the PGM FI main the PGM FI main relay 2 the PGM FI sub relay, cam and crank sensors, and ig ignition power to the PCM is all being fed off of this same circuit. What's the noise we're looking at here? What is this? I don't know, right? I, there's a whole bunch of components that are being powered here. Does that mean we can't look at the fuel injectors? No, it does not, but you need to be aware uh, that we're, go we're going to have noise in between injector firings that I cannot get rid of. Does that make sense? We can't get rid of it. There's nothing we can do as far as taking that measurement somewhere else. We can't do it. Not easily, we can't do it, right? We'd have to maybe get into the injector harness and tap into the one leg of the circuit. That's not happening. Go ahead and start this up. Let's watch these injector firings. I want you guys to see what we saw yesterday see some consistent firing in these injectors let's get a little bit more time so we can see it I want to see repetition so just let your eye watch these ramps these little ramps and now did you see the missing ramp now you see we have an issue here let me get you a little bit more time when we hooked up to this yesterday this is what we saw keep in mind we have a constant misfire on this vehicle let me pause that go ahead and shut that off a nice feature of the Pico that I can't do with the Varus is I can add a filter in here. This is which makes it a lot cleaner. Um, you know, uh, you're going to lose some sample rate when you throw a filter in, but we can see consistent injector firings. You see them? And you see the gap, how we're missing one. So I see, you know, just look here one, two, three, four, five, and then what do we see? A gap. One, two, three, four, five, and a gap. One, two, three, four, five, and a gap. You guys with me on this? You bring this vehicle in. It has a cylinder number three misfire. It's a constant miss. You go to the misfire counters, and we see the misfire occurring, okay? Granted, I just showed you cylinder four because I told you the problem. We moved the plug, right? When this came in, it was cylinder three, misfire monitor was showing a constant misfire. Because we swap the coils um, we decided to do some old school testing which is totally fine um, and then we went in the direction of 
injection next, not for any particular reason, just one of the many things we need to check for a misfire, right? Spark fuel compression. Connect to the main fuse at the fuse box and we see this. And then what, what are our thoughts here? We have a fuel injector problem. Wouldn't we all make that assumption? Again, we know now that this is an intentional shutdown, which I introduced this topic as. But if you saw this with a missing fuel injector ramp, what's this telling us? We have an open, right? We have an open in this single fuel injector circuit. Make sense? Questions so far? Is, is the computer shutting the injector now? Yes, it is. We'll talk about why here in a minute. Put that aside, the computer shutting this injector down for a second. Let's look at this at face value. Let's say you didn't know anything about that and you were looking at this, what you'd say to yourself is the same thing we said with Zach's Subaru with the injector driver that had failed, is that injector's not functioning and it should be, right? Make sense? We have a, a, a non-working fuel injector circuit. And um, some of the concerns yesterday was why is this voltage elevated off of zero? My zero line is here, right? And why is that voltage elevated off of zero. It should be injectors turning on and turning off and, and then that's it. And each time we should be starting at zero and have a ramp back to zero. Why is it not at zero? The answer is we have three relays that are being powered up the control side, which would be 100 milliamps each. Then we have the mass airflow, cam and crank, and it's also feeding part of the engine computer. We're drawing current flow to other circuits is why this is not at zero. Got it? Okay, and then we have when an injector fires, it multiplies that amperage. So if it's 400 milliamps of current traveling other places, that current flow will be there all the time. And when a fuel injector fires, that ramp will be on top of that. It will multiply current because we're on the feed to everything at the fuse box. Got it? Okay, so open injector here is what we're dealing with. And as far as an open goes, what we're talking about is a very, very simple circuit. Internal to the computer, we have a transistor, which now we have a good visual of, don't we? Because of our Subaru case study, right? The visual of a driver in the computer for a fuel injector. Uh, and if you guys forget or watching this later, I'll put that link in the description of this one for that Subaru video so you can go back and watch it fuel injector, driver, there wasn't a better case study that I've done than that one. And I think you guys agreed with me on that. You guys were here with me, so. An open, where is my open? If this is my issue, I have no current flow at here and here. Is it safe to say when we started working on this, is it safe to say that that's my number three? I think it is. Do we know for sure that that's my number three? No, we don't. But isn't that my constant misfire on the scan tool? And isn't that the one that's counting? And can't we plug this in and say that's most likely the number three? Yeah. Yes, well, what would we do otherwise if we wanted to know for sure, well, how will we handle that? We need a firing order, but that's not all we need. Because if I had the firing order, let's say firing order is one, two, three, four, five, six, just something simple, right? Um, that's great, but I don't know where to start counting. Make sense? If I don't know where to start counting, then I don't know where to plug these numbers in. I need some other channel to come in to synchronize this. How would I do that? Right. Nick? Can you hook up another uh, scope to one of the injectors? That's exactly what I would do. I would hook up the second channel to one of the injector uh, control wires. So remember that this feed, it's feeding all of the injectors, isn't it? Isn't it a shared circuit? You guys, I'll just draw four of them. It's a six cylinder engine, but I'll draw four. So where would my second channel be? If my amp probe is here and I'm measuring current flow to all of them, my second channel, I would just pick a fuel injector. Voltage pattern, remember a voltage pattern we can only look at on the control wire. Pick one injector. When that one is firing, I'll get a pulse that looks like this. Can I use that pulse to synchronize this pattern down here? Yeah. 
Yes, I can. And what that would look like underneath would be a second channel. I'm not going to do it because of difficulty here, but we would have we would have a spike that would occur here. And if it's this one, it's one, two, three, four, five. Wait, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm missing one, so it would be there, and then it would be here, right after the. I'm not drawing the detail of that, but do you, you guys understand what that pattern? why that pattern would look like that? Technically, it wouldn't look like this. What would it look like? You would have, right? It would be tied exactly in with the current pattern of this one. When current flow begins, voltage drops. When current flow ends, voltage spikes. So we would see this every six. And now can we plug in our firing order? And that's how we would do it. The reason I'm not showing that is the difficulty to get to the injectors because the intake manifold covers them all, makes it almost impossible. I can get to one of them with a hook tool. I could grab the one on the passenger side in the front. I could have grabbed that if I needed to, but we don't need to. Jake. Could you do a cylinder drop test for one of the Yes, for sure. We can do a cylinder drop test on the coils was Jake's question and that would be used to identify again what cylinder is misfiring. But I think given how new the vehicle is 2011 and how well the misfire monitor is working, in other words, I can clearly see it's a number three issue with the code. I could clearly see it was a number three issue with my misfire data, right? Granted, you guys saw number four, but I didn't see a reason to do a cylinder drop test for that reason. But yes, you could do one. For us right now, we're worried about this injector. It's injector three, right? Open, no current flow in any of these. So what we're talking about would be an open, uh, could we have an open in the feed, say, in this area? What do you think? Why not, Jake? There you go. Cannot be here because the other injectors are still working. So no. Could it be here? Absolutely, we could have an open right there. Could we have an open in the winding here? Yeah. Yes. Could we have an open in the control circuit here? Yeah. Yes. And could we have an open driver, a failed driver like our Subaru? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So what would be our next step? This is where we were about to go yesterday before we said, hold on, time out, because one of you guys brought something in the room. We'll talk about that in a second. What do you do at this point? You run into this, what do we do next? What about the computer? I want to test, very good Jake. I want to put my voltmeter right here and I want to measure my voltage pattern. I want to see what my voltage level is right here. Okay? If my... where it connects right to the PCM, sorry, okay. thank you. This, this is my engine computer. I want a voltage reading right there at that location. Seems like on the other side of the transistor. Other side of the okay. uh, fuel injector before the transistor. I'm not inside the computer. What I showed you guys yeah, on the Subaru the is not a normal type of uh, diagnosis. That was awesome, yeah, it, that gave us a good visual of the internals, but that's not what we do in the field. In the exactly. field, we need to know right now is it the computer? Is it the wiring? Is it the fuel injector? Guys, do you understand the fuel injectors underneath the intake manifold here? Okay, so I can't get to the fuel injector. So what are we left with? We are left with taking a voltage measurement at the computer. Does everyone understand that? So did you back No, hang on. We didn't do any of that. I'm telling you from a standpoint of this would be your normal approach to this. Okay, so what do we want to see at the computer, guys, if my fuel injector and my wiring is intact? What would I see in this location with the engine running if this is good, this is good, and this is good? That's right, very good. I will see a flat line, 14 volts with the engine running. What does the computer do with this circuit? It grounds it. It's a ground side switch circuit. If there's no ground here, my voltage never drops across the coil. It'll be 14 in this location and 14 in this location. 14 volts would be what? 
14 volts equals good circuit. Do you guys understand that? 14 volts is a good circuit. Make sense? Zero volts in that same, if I go here and I see zero volts, what do we have? We have an open circuit. You guys follow? Okay, so we didn't do this, but if we went to the computer and saw zero volts, at that point, at that point only, do we sell the upper intake removal. You with me on that? Because we don't know if it's an open here or open here or here because the intake manifold covers all of it. Does that make sense? If I see zero volts at the computer, we're going in. Make sense? We're pulling the intake, we're selling the job. We'll probably sell the injector just from a simple standpoint of you're going in there anyway. But you don't know if that injector is faulty because you could have an open in the harness. Highly unlikely unless a mouse got in there and it can happen. But at this point, we would sell the job, pull the intake. If we see 14 volts in this location, again, what's that tell us about our wiring, our injector, our control, our feed? It's good. And what would that put you in the direction of? Bad driver, just like the Subaru, right? Okay. Um, if the computer is intentionally shutting this injector off, which we know, what do you think we would see if we go measure that wire at the computer? What will we see? Battery voltage, engine running battery voltage. Think about that for a second now. You're gonna do this test at the computer. The computer's intentionally shutting it off, meaning it's it's not completing the driver to ground. We're going to see 14 volts here all the time. And what are you going to say to yourself? What's wrong with this car? Driver. Bad driver. You're going to put an engine computer in this potentially and you will be wrong, which is the whole purpose I'm recording this right now. You with me? The computer is intentionally shutting this driver off. Questions? Yeah, Mr. Danny. Yes. Would that be why it didn't, say it didn't have any more misfires earlier? Because if it wasn't firing the injector... It's possible that when the computer... That's a good point. Uh, Nick is asking why the counter stopped. And it could be that the misfire counter stopped because the computer recognized the fault and shut that injector off. And maybe within the Honda programming, that's just what they do with their misfire monitor. I don't know, but that's a good point, and it's probably why. Yes. Other questions? Okay, here's the whole key to this, this whole thing. How do we know when we have intentional shutdown or not, right? How do we know if there's a fault in the circuit or is the computer recognizing a misfire and shutting the injector off to protect the catalytic converter? That's why it would do it. How do we know? The answer is startup. We have to Look at this same waveform on initial startup. The computer will never have a memory. There is a memory of the misfire, but it will never have a memory that says, the last time we were running, I shut that injector off. So when we start up this time, I'm going to maintain that memory and just never turn the injector on. Do you guys understand the, the fault in that logic? I mean, what if the misfire is gone? Why would we remember to shut the injector off? Well, no, we need to check the system first, see what it's doing, and then reshut the injector back off. That's the strategy that they go through. So it's as simple as doing what? Shut the car off, restart it, and grab that first capture, those first couple of screens of the fuel injector firing. And this will tell us everything we need to know about the circuit. So let's do that. Let's watch it. This is, you see, you see the gaps, right? And uh, I'll leave the filter on, which will actually help. And um, go ahead and start that. We'll watch the first couple of screens. You'll, you'll see it live. Oh, we had the key on the whole time, didn't we? Um, shut the car off. Wait five seconds. <laughs> I lied to you there, right? I said there's no memory. Um, apparently, if we leave the key on, 
There is, because when we set the car off, didn't we immediately put the key back on? We never gave the computer time to power down, so that was kind of contradictory to what I just told you. Go ahead, start it. I expect to see these here. You guys with me on initial startup? Do you see? All my injectors are firing. Can you see it? It looks good, doesn't it? Pause that real quick so you can see it, right? Maybe we should watch it live. Shut, uh, shut it off, but don't wait. In other words, shut it off, turn the key right back on. You see how the computer never lost? Well, it did momentarily. Start it back up. That's, that's weird how it held that one for a second. But watch it. They're all firing. There it is. So... You guys understand that what we're looking at behind me here is the computer intentionally turned that injector off. Do you see how your focus now goes from a fuel injector problem to, oops, we have a problem with compression or ignition, right? Or could we still have a fuel injector problem? Couldn't the nozzle be plugged up and the uh, spray isn't there and we have a misfire from a faulty injector and then the computer shuts the injector off? because it's protecting the cat. It doesn't know what the cause is of the misfire. You guys understand what I'm saying? But doesn't this totally change direction as far as what we were about to do with this car? We were about to go to the computer, do a measurement and say, hey, this fuel injector is not firing. Why? We would have done that measurement and found 14 volt flat line at the computer and we would have said driver issue. Not the case. This is intentional shutdown to protect the cat. I spilled the beans already. We have a bad spark plug. We knew that by moving the plug. So that's what we did yesterday when we realized this. And it was by one of you guys, I forget, one of you looked up a bulletin and, had, and you read the first part of it, talked about an ECU reset. And as soon as I heard that word reset, I was like, oh, wait we might have an injector driver that's intentionally shutting down. You see where in my mind I kind of connected the dots there and I realized, wait, hold on, we got have to do another test. And it was a simply, it was simply shutting the engine off, restarting it and grabbing this waveform on initial startup. One more time, Cody, let's watch it. Shut it off, wait five seconds and turn the key back on. Actually, you're good to go now. Start it back up, watch it. Injectors firing again. You have a good driver. We have a good circuit. We can do analysis on that injector circuit itself as far as detail, but makes it a little difficult when you have all these other things turning on and off. We're gonna have some weird looking ramps in there. All right, go ahead and shut that off. In other words, if I wanted to look at that injector waveform, do you guys understand that I really can't do good detailed analysis here? Why is, what is this curviness up here from? Is that the injector? Or is that amperage down here that's occurring the same time the fuel injector is firing, which puts this noise up here? You follow? This is not an injector problem. This is other circuits running the same time the injector's firing. So in other words, I can't really do detailed analysis here from the fuse box because of those other circuits running. No? Did that make sense? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I follow what you're saying. <laughs> you wouldn't have said it. But that's why it looks like that. You can see the same w weirdness or same shape pattern down here. In fact, I could probably, if I could pull this piece out right here and grab this and stick it right over top of there, it would be exactly the same. Um, Derek, you had a question. Good? Yep. Nick. So it, would it be possible that a um, bad driver would ever act like that? Like it would run good on startup and then go bad? Or would no, it I, bad? I've never seen it. Um, Nick's question, if you guys didn't hear it, could a driver act that way <laughs> where it, it works on initial startup and then stops working? I think that to answer that, it, it's possible. But what would put me away from that issue that Nick just asked is, I would continue to shut it off and restart it. And if I saw the same consistent activation of that circuit, then I would say, no, that circuit's fine. The computer's intentionally shutting it off is what I would say to myself. Intentional shutdown. 
is this something that only applies to fuel injectors? It's not. Other outputs, the computer will protect itself. If it sees too much current flow, it will shut a driver off. If it sees an open in a circuit, I'm thinking of a Honda oxygen sensor, it will shut the driver off. You're doing your checks on the circuit, looks like a bad computer, it's not. It's intentional shutdown of a circuit. How do we avoid those other situations? You clear the fault codes, you install a test light, make your test light bulb a known good circuit, clear the codes, reactivate it, see if your light lights. We talked about this in chapter three, chapter three material. How about ignition coils? Will we ever shut down an ignition coil like this? Intentional shutdown of a coil. Other than an overload, maybe the driver protecting itself, the answer is no. What happens if we shut the coil off? We have fuel still, and we're gonna be dumping fuel into the exhaust. We're not gonna do that. So this is really a fuel injector strategy here, primarily, that we're talking about this morning. Yes. Um, do not count on this feature on older systems. The early OBD2, 96 to 2000, 96 to 2002, somewhere in that range, they were not very good at all in identifying cylinders and shutting fuel injectors off. Um, when Dennis called me, this is my boss's van, I, I had him tow it. He took a little video of the car um, misfiring. I could hear it in the video, and I, he's showed me the check engine light was flashing. He was 90 miles away. I told him to tow it. You guys understand why I told him to tow it. Could he have driven it though with the Honda strategy that this has, with the misfire strategy that this has, Honda? Could he have driven it? He could have. Sorry, Dennis, he'll be watching this. 96 miles of his 100 mile free towing of his AAA package he used up. But I don't want to take a chance, right? Injector was protecting him he could have driven it. No way for me to know that with him 90 miles away. Any questions? Intentional shutdown. We good with that? All right, cool. Thank you.